What's up guys, Alexander here with uh, Date Psych. I want to do a little bit different of a video today. This is a general research tips video. This is going to be very helpful for anyone who is a student. If you're a undergraduate, you're a grad student, post-grad, you probably already know if you are a post-grad. But I will explain briefly how to research a topic, how to find sources, how to find the papers, how to compile a very, very comprehensive list of research topics and basically cover all of the material in a given domain or field. There are three steps to this basically and these are your initial topic search. They're cross-referencing papers referenced in the initial papers that you find and then there is a cross-referencing with the citations of that paper. So looking first at the first step, right? This is your initial search. This is where you're gonna to go to a journal database, right? A scholarly journal database. If you're in a university, it's gonna be something like EBSCOhost, right? It might be PubMed, it could be, uh, it, uh, the open one would be Google Scholar, of course. So anyone can go to Google Scholar and you'll take the keywords of the topic that you want to search. You might have a good idea already of what you want to search, or you might be starting from an idea completely from scratch. So you go to your journal, Type in the keywords for the topic of whatever it may be, and the articles will come up. You will have a big, big list of articles. Longer, the less specific your topic, longer, the more research is done in that field, and the vast majority of it won't be relevant to you. So you're going to have to go through, you're going to have to read the abstracts, identify from the abstracts which ones are relevant, and then you're going to have to read the articles. Simple, right? It takes a long time, but... The process itself is very simple, and that is the full conclusion of step one. That's usually where most people are going to be starting to perform research on any given topic for any given purpose, really. Moving on to step two, and this is where the technique gets a little more, a little more advanced. You're going to want to cross-reference researches in the initial papers that you find. So let's use an example. Let's say you find a paper about facial attractiveness, right? You're going to read the paper and you're going to see the other papers cited within that paper. These are going to be papers that are relevant to whatever paper you are reading because the authors who wrote that paper have previously identified those papers. Every research paper is broken into sections, I say every, but almost every. And this begins with an introduction. There's a methodology. There's a results where they report the results of their experiment. If insofar as it's an experimental methodology or correlational methodology, there's a discussion section. Most of the references that you find are going to be covered in the introduction section because the introductions of papers work kind of like a literature review of past research. If it's a good paper, even if it's a mediocre paper, it's going to cover similar findings that they think provide a background for their own report or their own results which they are going to report. They might cover opposing uh, findings as well so you can kind of get both sides of it and that will give you a place to start. The second most common place to see references to other papers when you want to cross-reference these other papers is in the discussion section which is actually at the very very end of the paper. And a brief digression here, a lot of people when they start reading papers they try to read it front to back. It's actually really good, guys, if you read the discussion first, and then you read the introduction, and then you read the methodology, and then you read the results. You don't always have to read these, these in order. You can find a way that, that works best for you. But if you're looking to collect, essentially, a list of sources to go back and read further on a specific topic, check the introduction first. It's going to give you a lot of references. Check the discussion next. Check the methodology, especially if you are looking for anything related to methodology within that field, which may be more helpful if you're designing an experiment yourself and you want to know what statistical methodology you need to select uh, for your own analysis. And basically, that is the end of step two. Now, I should make a note here is that step two is recursive because you see these papers, you read a paper, you go through the introduction, and you find three other papers with similar results that are very relevant. Okay. Now you got to go and read those papers. And then you're at step two again, right? So you're reading those papers and you're going down. Oh, there's some more papers you have to read. And then you repeat. So step two, maybe you have to repeat that 
a few times. Maybe you just get stuck on step two and you can build a, a very, very large list of, of relevant literature hopping from paper to paper. In any case, let's say you're done with step two. We can go on to step three. And step three is a cross-reference of citations. And by citations, what I mean is other papers that have cited the paper that you are watching or reading, I should say. So if you search for a keyword, if, uh, I'll actually put an example up, I guess, from, from Google Scholar, and this will be on EBSCOhost or, or PubMed or whatever, whatever you're using in your field. When you do this search, it will come up and you'll see something at the bottom that says citations. And that's how many times a paper has been cited by other papers. So if you're reading a paper, for example, that was published in 2002, it's kind of old at this point, right? It's 20 years old. Any citations within that paper that you found in step two, they can't cite into the future, can they? They can only cite backwards. But you want to find newer research. You want to find current research, which is often going to have a better methodology. It might be replication attempts, good replications or failed replications. Those are things that you need to know. And when you look at the citation, it's basically, it'll pull up a list, just like a keyword search, of all of the past papers that have cited that paper. Some will be in agreement, some will be in disagreement. Some will actually be a replication attempts that may have successfully replicated that paper. Some will be failed replication. Remember, replication is a very, very important part of the scientific process, and specifically within psychology, but also equally within medicine right now, for example, there's what's called a, a replication crisis, where old papers are not being replicated because the old methodology was bad, and we're basically having to revise a lot of what we thought we knew about you know, facts about humans based on this old psychological research. Turns out they're not facts. The research can't be replicated. And, you know, they call it a replication crisis. It's for another topic because I don't think it's really a crisis, so to speak. But again, a minor digression there. You have to go through the citations. You have to look again. You'll read the abstracts. You'll find the ones that are relevant. And then I guess you will go back to step two because, again, you will read the introduction of those. You will read those papers and you'll find other references. If you go through these three steps, you will cover basically all of the research that all of the authors that published those papers have covered. You're very, very unlikely to miss anything at all. And these steps are also, like I said, this is step two, you could say is recursive. Step three flips back to step two. So they're kind of interchangeable. It's kind of a process. You could probably even start, if someone just gave you a paper, you could probably arrive at the same collection of literature at the end, just starting with a paper without even doing a keyword search, if you have a paper that really focuses on a topic. Because all of the research out there is very, very connected. It's really a big web of research. And if you look at the number of citations in any given paper, it's a lot of the time it's really big. If you see 20 citations only, it's often a small number of citations, especially in in the social sciences, especially in psychology, for example. So basically seeing what other researchers have already found out there is going to help you a lot. So as I was saying, if you do this, you're unlikely to miss very much. This is a way that if you're very thorough about it, you're probably going to cover all of the published research that there is. This would be more thorough, for example, than the inclusion methodology used in a systematic review or a meta-analysis where they select the keywords ahead of time, they do the search, and if the search does not conform to those keywords, oftentimes the paper will not be included, right? Because you have to have a methodology that you can replicate. So this is a, a good methodology if you're trying to write a thesis, if you're trying to research a topic that is brand new to you. Anything from very, very informal research to your PhD dissertation, basically, is going to be some variation of this process here. I should note that one thing that this may miss is very, very new papers that have no citations. If you don't do a very, very thorough, thorough search of keywords or your keywords don't match up with that, it could miss papers that haven't been published yet, right? So unpublished manuscripts and preprints, which doesn't mean that they haven't even been peer reviewed. These, this could just be very, very new literature that people like to publish preprints now. They're doing it more because you'll notice you go to some of these these uh, 
to try to look at these papers. And if you don't have access to a database, they're behind paywalls. So people, researchers, are liking to push their stuff into preprints a little bit now to get around it because researchers don't get any money from this, guys. The journals get money from this. The researchers don't. Anyway, so you might miss very, very new research. And there are ways to stay on top of that. If you want to stay on top of like very, very current research, you guys will notice some of the videos that I have made use uh, preprint research. They reference research that hasn't been published yet. So how do you get that? I'll make another video actually uh, explaining how to stay really on top of stuff if you want to get notifications for brand new research that has just been pushed to a preprint server, for example. Even, even people's like master's theses and things like that that aren't going to show up often. I can show you guys how to, how to find those sorts of things, but uh, it'll be a whole other video. I don't want this one to be too long. And I think that's probably it, guys. So brief summary. Three steps, your initial search, referencing, cross-referencing the citations within the relevant papers that you find, checking citations of those papers, repeating step two, and the rest of it is just a lot of reading, guys, and being as diligent as you choose to be with it. You know, the less you ignore, the more you delve into it, the more sources you're going to uncover, the more thorough your search will be, and ultimately that comes down to you and how diligent and thorough you are going to be as a researcher. But if you follow these steps diligently, I would say you would miss very little, 5%, 1% of the papers relevant to what you want to research. So I hope this helped you guys. I hope it wasn't too long and I will try to make another video and talk to you guys later.